I've had a Zhiyun Crane one for nearly three years, so it was time to upgrade and I picked up this guy. The Zhiyun Weeble Lab. Let's open it up. You'll have noticed actually I'm in a different spot to normal. This isn't where I normally film my videos. I need a, uh, a bench as sorts to balance this to show you guys opening up the box. So that's why I'm in a different spot to normal. So let's go ahead and crack this box open. So, inside, the quick start guide uh, and the, uh, the case itself. So this is like a foam polystyrene, it's not polystyrene, like hard foam case, kind of like a little business case. On the side it's got two little switches, one that way, one that way, and let's pop it open. There you go. That is what is inside, the Weeble Lab itself. So that is the Weeble Lab. Attached to it, or what you can attach to I should say, is the base here. Uh, now this obviously can go on the bottom, it can also go on the side here if you want to go in under slung mode. So I'm just going to put it on here just for the purpose of showing you right now how it sets up. What else do you get inside the box? You have a little pouch that has all your cables in it. So you have a, a micro USB, you have a, another micro USB, and one is for charging with the charger here. Just to let you know as well, the batteries are actually underneath here now, uh, and they're stored in there when the, uh, the gimbal arrives. They are in plastic inside here. Don't look inside your packet and worry, where are my batteries? Because they're inside there. You also get a USB, no, you get another micro USB cable. So we have, oh, one's a USB-C, one's a micro USB, and then you also have a smaller micro USB which will attach from your gimbal to your camera directly. Then you have a couple of uh, nuts there for different sizes and a USB-C to micro USB adapter. So, nice little pouch there. And then you have the sliding quick release plate and you also have this thing, but I don't know what that's for. Let's put this on the side. So I'm gonna talk about this gimbal, but I'm also gonna do some closer up angles for you as well, some B-roll as I'm talking about this, just to tell you about what it is I'm talking about and some of the specifics of this gimbal. So why did I pick this up first off? Well, I had the Zeon Crane 1 for quite a while, uh, and it was time to upgrade. I needed something that would hold a little bit more weight, had a few more features, uh, and this is the one that I decided to go for. It's very small, very compact. When this base is off, it's a tiny little gimbal. It fits in pretty much any camera bag, uh, and it's a really small size that holds quite a bit of weight too. Get rid of that box. You can see it's in the frame, and it'll bother me, and it'll probably bother you as well. Sorry if I keep looking right here, because this is a different setup. My monitor is right here. Normally it's right below, and I can quickly glance. Now I have to look off to the side just to make sure I'm in frame and everything is in frame. So if I keep looking this way, I'm sorry. You get this little rubber thing with it. It's actually, uh, it says, garbage on it, so that is just to be trashed out. It's basically when it's in storage, it's just to stop the metal from rubbing together. So you can get rid of that. It has that new smell too. That new gimbal smell. It's actually a new anything smell. New stuff smells nice when it comes right out of the box. So this isn't really a review. This is more me just talking about some of the features of it uh, as the actual design itself, some of the things that they've done to really improve over some other designs. And then I'm gonna show you how to balance it with the Sony a7 III as well. So I bought the basic version of this, the version that doesn't come with anything other than the gimbal itself, a set of batteries, doesn't come with that smartphone holder or anything like that. I have no interest in using that, to be honest. One of the features of this is the fact that you can actually view the screen. It's no longer blocked by the back here, so I don't have a need to use the, uh, the smartphone adapter. It can send a live image from the, uh, the camera itself to your phone, but I don't have a, an interest in using that. It also does have the ability to use follow focus, but I'm not gonna be talking about that again because it's not something that I plan on using. I'm gonna be using this mostly in continuous autofocus mode because I really like Sony's continuous autofocus and it works for me. Just want a gimbal that can hold the camera and then the camera will do everything else for me. So let's talk about the actual design of this itself. So the top here is made of metal, magnesium alloy, I believe. And then the bottom, the handle here is actually made of plastic. But when you hold it, it doesn't feel, doesn't feel cheap in any way. It actually feels very, very sturdy, very nice. I held the, uh, the GGI Ronin S recently at a camera show, and I've gotta say I was really impressed by how it felt in the hand compared to my Zhiyun Crane 1. Now having held this, this feels just as high quality as the Ronin does. 
The grit on it is really nice, it feels solid, and the plastic, it's it's like a matte finish, but it's uh, it feels really nice in the hand. It doesn't feel cheap. Sometimes plastic just can feel and really look cheap. This doesn't feel like that. It's a good thing. The hand grip actually is also a good size. I was a little bit worried that it might be too small, but my hands fit in there pretty perfectly. The other nice thing as well is this little bit here where you can go into underslung mode actually supports the top right there, so it just makes it a little bit easier to hold. If your hands were maybe a little bit bigger than mine, and I don't really know how to show you how big my hands are, um, Here's a A6300 and my hand, just so you can see. So if your hands are bigger than that, you might have an issue holding it. But for me, it seems to work quite well. So as I said before, the batteries are now held inside here. There's a little sliding plate here. When you first get the gimbal, the batteries are actually in here, individually wrapped in plastic, which is kind of strange. Just don't fret, as I said before, that they're not in the packet. They are kept inside here, probably just for transportation safety, I guess. And the weight of this as well, I honestly expect it to be really light. It's not that light, but that's not a bad thing. I actually quite like it to have a good weight to it. It feels very solid and I'm happy with the weight of it. It's not gonna wear you out or anything like that. The Ronin is very heavy and I feel like this is, this is a good weight. I was really worried about these tripod legs because it literally just screws in. It's just a tripod mount in the bottom there. And I was kind of worried that this wouldn't be very good. Honestly, having used this now, and this is made by ZUN itself, it has their logo right at the bottom there. This is, this is nice. I actually think I might buy another one of these and have one permanently on the top and one permanently on the bottom there. This is a really good design. I've owned a ton of these different kinds of things. I've got one supporting my monitor. I've, I've got this little garbage one here, uh, and they're all, honestly, they're pretty crap. This is solid, so I'm happy with this. When it actually is screwed onto the bottom, it actually feels like part of the gimbal. There is no movement there whatsoever. You can hold it up here and it doesn't move around. You can hold it right here and it feels nice. So here's the thing that I'm most impressed with to begin with. You'll notice that when I'm holding this, here it rattles a little bit, but it doesn't move around. The old gimbal that I used to have, it would move around like this. This new one has these really nice little locks for every axis. So I'll show you right here. If you lock these, I'll do a close up over the top as well. But if you lock these, that axis now locks, it doesn't move around. That is incredibly smart for if you're traveling with this and you wanna put it in your bag, you wanna make sure it doesn't get damaged, you wanna make sure it doesn't move around and get scratched. That's really smart. So, just to show you here, moving around completely freely, if I lock this, you can still move it around, you can hear some resistance, but when it comes into place, it locks in there. Same for this one up here. So your lock is down here. Right now it's moving freely, I'll lock it. You can hear a little bit of resistance and then it locks in place that way. You can also have it so it locks in place right down there. The nice thing is you can lock it, move it around still, and then when it gets to where it needs to be, it just locks itself. So it's always locking in the exact correct position, which is really nice. One other thing I did notice as well, which I haven't really seen anyone else talk about, when you're using this in underslung mode, you're thinking that you're just gonna be screwing it on and that's really all you're gonna be supporting. I'll show you right here what happens. So, you might think that's it, you're just gonna hold it in underslung mode like that. There's actually a lock down here. When you click that, you push it down. You can now twist this. You hear that? It locked into place. I'll hold up to the mic again so you can hear. Lock it. So you might be wondering what's actually happening there. Well, I'll show you. There is holes right here, hopefully you can see those. And then on the handle here, there's a little lock thing that pops up. Can you see that? So that is locking into one of the holes there. So you don't have any issues with it actually moving around or becoming loose because it physically can't. It's screwed in and then you lock it and it can't come on loose until you change that. Another nice design. I'm really impressed with some of the little things that they've done to to think about this gimbal before they've made it. It's, it's gone through a lot of design, you can tell that, and uh, it's very impressive. Another nice thing about the locking system is it makes it a lot easier to balance. So before, when you wanted to balance your gimbal, you have all these different axes to, to kind of control. Now, what you can do is, you can lock, let's say this one, you can lock this one, and now you just need to worry about balancing this one. Once you're done with that one, you lock it, you loosen this one, now you can balance that one. Once that one's done, lock it, Loosen this one, now you balance that one. So it makes it a lot easier to balance, and you're gonna see that in a second when I actually show you balancing with the a7 III. 
So this is what attaches to the actual gimbal itself. I think it's a Manfrotto sliding plate. It goes on there. I actually like to use another system. Now you can't just use this system, you have to use this one because it goes onto the gimbal. So this will need to screw onto here. Now this is the Manfrotto 323, I think RC32 quick release plate. The reason I like to use these is I have them on everything. I have them on both of my cameras. I have some lights on these. So it's just convenient for me to use this system with everything else. This is how easy this system is and this is part of the reason I like it. So the camera literally locks in. That's it, the camera's in there, it's on sturdy. Lock that in, it can't come undone. To get it off, you literally unlock it click that off and it comes off. That's why I love using these. I'll put the link to these down below if you like these. I use these with everything. You can get cheap ones of these. I think in US they're about 12 bucks for one of these with the plate. So these are really useful. Now, I said to you before that I have already pre-balanced this to try and figure out how it works. It doesn't fully balance with this attached on there. Basically what happens is the camera's center of gravity is a little bit higher than I guess the gimbal can support. And although this is way under the payload, I just can't get it to balance properly. I'll show you in a little bit after I've balanced it without this on. But yeah, bear that in mind. So you can't balance it when it's turned off, but when you turn the gimbal on, it works completely fine. It just doesn't balance with it being turned off, which isn't the greatest, but it still works. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna swap to my other camera because I'm using the a7 III right now. I'll start recording on the a6300. The view might change a little bit, but I wanna be able to balance the a7 III onto this gimbal. So let's change to that right now. Okay, and we're back. This is with the a6300 and the Tamron 2875, in case you're wondering. So what we're gonna try and balance right now is the Sony a7 III with the 1635 F4. This is a pretty weighty combo, but it's definitely under the payload of what this gimbal will carry. I'm gonna balance it without my quick release plates on there just to show you how to initially balance it. Afterwards, I'm gonna put this quick release plate back on and then show you that it doesn't balance, but it still works. Okay, so first off, let's just take off the, uh, the mount plate on the bottom here. Screw this on. I recommend Screw this on a little bit, and then move it around where you want it to go. In my case, I'm gonna put it quite close to the back just to be safe. You can always slide this forwards on the gimbal itself. You can't slide it back, so get it right at the back. So now what we do, grab your gimbal, and uh, you'll see there's an arrow on the bottom of here, so make sure this is pointing the same way that your arrows on top of the gimbal right here point to. So in this case, it's gonna slide on this way. Push this little button here. That allows the quick release plate to go in. You now can't go back, which is good. Okay, so that's on there. So then control how far forwards or how far back this moves. You obviously slide it and then you lock it with a little locking system right here. Okay. So if you tighten it up, you'll see now it doesn't move so much. Okay, so the A7 III is mounted here. We have different axes that we have to balance when it comes to setting up the gimbal. Essentially the goal is to make sure that when all of these are loose, the gimbal stays wherever you leave it. Like right now it's just flopping around all over the place. That's not how we want it. It needs to be so that if I was to leave it just like that, it would stay like that. If I was to leave it like that, it would stay like that. That is ideally what we strive for. If it's slightly off, it's not a big deal. The gimbal will counteract anything that is not 100% but for less strain on the motors and to make sure the battery life lasts longer, you wanna try and balance it properly. So we have different axes that we have to balance. We have one just here, which controls the height of the entire camera, so it can go up and down. We also have the one right here, which controls the movement of the camera left and right. We have the one right here, which actually controls the camera moving forwards and backwards on the base plate itself. You also have the one right here, which controls this to move inwards and outwards, okay? So, my recommendation when it comes to balancing this first, uh, and obviously you're gonna wanna lock everything so it's easier, you wanna balance this one first. The goal right here is to make sure that, it's actually quite well balanced right now, so I'm gonna loosen it a little bit, just to show you. So, see right now how it flops forwards like that? We don't want it to do that. We want to be able to leave that and it kind of stays right there. We don't want it to go forwards and we don't want it to go back. So you see right now, if I let go, it just kind of falls forwards. So this is all about small movements to get it so it's balanced. So that's going forwards, it's too far forwards. You can even tighten it a little bit so the movement isn't quite as loose. Too far back and then that's good. So now tighten it up. So now you see when I let go, it's actually pretty well balanced in the middle there. Now it's still moving around but that's fine. 
You just want to make sure that it's balanced and not moving forwards or backwards. So now you want to make sure using this arm right here that it stays down or it stays up. So you see right now, it just moves all over the place. So what you're going to want to do now is using this one right here, loosen this and then little tiny adjustments to make sure that it's not moving around. So if it moves forwards, it means you need to move this back. If it moves backwards, it means you need to move this forwards. So right now you can see it's actually pretty well balanced. I'll loosen it just so you can see. So it's moving forwards there. So it means we need to move this back. So let's move that back a little bit. That's pretty accurate actually. Now it will get easier to balance the more you do this. Also the further into balancing all the different axes, the easier it will get too. So it's actually a little bit off. Let's just correct that a tiny bit. Now this is little tiny movements, no big, big movements. Little tiny millimeter adjustments is what's gonna get you your fine tuning balance. And it could be the sake of like one millimeter that goes from being forwards to backwards and that's how small the movements need to be. Now you see it's starting to move forwards again, that's fine. So we just go back and make another little adjustment here. There we go, perfect. That's pretty well balanced that direction. So now we'll loosen these ones and there you go. You can see straight away that it's completely off balance that way. So I'm gonna go ahead and lock this one as I know this one is balanced. And now we need to adjust so it's moving left and right. So you can see it's moving wildly to the left there. So we need to move the camera this direction. So we'll do that by loosening right on the bottom here. And we'll move this across just to get it in the middle. Again, tiny little movements is all you need. And there you go, that seems to be pretty good. So let's just lock that and just see. It's really hard to do backwards. That's pretty balanced. All right, so lock everything off, make sure it's all good to go. And now we can turn the gimbal on. So power it on, the button is just on the side just here. Power that on. There you go. Balanced and good to go. Now I'm gonna quickly show you by putting on this plate how it actually doesn't balance properly. I just can't get it to work. I guess the center of gravity, as I said, is a little bit too high, but it still works fine. So now I'll show you that. All right, so now I have rebalanced this with the quick release plate on there. You'll notice that it sits quite a little bit higher up now. It adds definitely some space there. And I think it just puts its center of gravity a little bit too high and uh, I can't get it balanced. So you'll see that it's balanced this way. You'll see that it's balanced this way. Um, it's balanced pretty good that way. And when I lock these off, just so you can see, this one up here I can unlock. And when I unlock it, it looks like it's okay. But when you try and move it this way, or this way, you can see it doesn't stay there. Uh, in actual fact, the eye cup hits it at the back as well. So, so this is about as the best balance I can get it. Now that being said, it does work fine when you turn it on. So if I turn it on here, you'll see that it counteracts any, there you go, it works fine. You might just have a little bit of a lesser battery life. There's a little bit more strain on the motors, not a lot. So bear that in mind. There's no way to get around that, at least from what I've seen. I think some counterweights might fix the solution. If any of you guys know how to do that, let me know down below. Be very interested in trying that out. Um, but the actual gimbal itself is, is really nice. I've played around with it quite a bit now and it's got some really cool features on it that I'm gonna do in another video. So there we go, that is an unboxing of the Xeon Weeble Lab and uh, how to balance it with the Sony a7 III and the 1635 as long as you're not using a base plate. So hopefully you took something away from the video today. If you're not part of my channel already, you know what to do. Hit that little subscribe button down below and I'll see you guys in the next video, which will probably be a more thorough test with that with some really nice B-roll footage and showing off some of the things it can do. I'll see you guys in the next one. See ya.